You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, we're still startled with the Dallas judge, Tammy Kemp, who came off the bench to hug Amber Geiger after she was sentenced to 10 years in prison for killing Botham Jean. The Freedom From Religion Foundation has now filed a complaint against Kemp with the Texas State Commission on Judicial Conduct, the agency that investigates allegations of judicial misconduct. The group said Kemp went too far. Kemp has also been criticized by activists who wonder whether a black defendant would get the same treatment. Now, two of the jurors in the case were interviewed by ABC's Good Morning America, and this is what they had to say about their decision to sentence Amber Geiger to 10 years in prison. There was a lot of crying. A lot of crying. When we were told to go decide between five and life, that was like, we didn't have words. Prosecutors were asking for 28 years. They were. Um, you all landed at 10. After hearing about how his family talked about him, he seemed like just the light in their lives, and he was kind and just forgiving. caring and forgiving. And I, I said, I told everyone, I was like, I'm really having a hard time with this because we all agree that it was a mistake, and I don't think... I, th I don't think Bo would want to take harsh vengeance. I think he would want to forgive her. And I felt, I didn't feel like I had any right to speak for him. And he isn't there to talk for himself. But listening to how people talked about him, I felt like he would forgive her. They asked for 28 years, and I'm going to be honest and, and true. I was like, I can't give her 28 years. I know a lot of people are not happy about the 10 years, but I felt like, you know, for this case, was not like any other case. You can't compare this case to any of those other officers killing unarmed black men. Those officers that killed unarmed black men, when they got out, they went back to living their lives. Amber Geiger, ever since she killed that man, she has not been the same. She showed remorse in that she's going to have to deal with that for the rest of her life. Can, can I give her a hug, please? Please? We found out this morning about what his brother did, and it kind of it kind of helped us uh, feel like we ended up with the right decision. So one thing that Botham can teach us all is that we should all love each other instead of hate each other. And I and I honestly think that if Botham would have just got shot and not killed, I think he would have forgiven Amber Geiger. But he didn't just get shot. He's dead like never to come back again. And then talk about the remorse of Amber Geiger. Hell yeah. If your ass is facing up to 99 years in prison, you're going to try to show as much remorse as possible. It's still called consequences, folks. A panel, Chris Prudhomme, Republican strategist, Dr. Neon Bay Carter, Howard University Department of Political Science. Uh, folks, um, I, to, to hear the sister say, I, I couldn't give her 28 years. Yeah. A guy is dead right. because she wasn't paying attention and entered his apartment mm -hmm. while he was eating ice cream. Yeah. She's a police officer. Yeah. And I think, I think that part of it, too, is just in this whole conversation, Botham John and, and, and what happened is getting lost. It's now about Amber It's Geiger. all about her. And it's like... This Not man, the dead man. Exactly. Her. It's about her. And I think the thing is, I mean, like you said, anybody would feel remorse when you're talking about, I can go to prison anywhere from 5 to 99 years. But the fact of the matter is, you had the weapon. You were the responsible party. That gentleman didn't do anything, right, other than be in his own home, and you killed him. And the idea that, well, she's sorry, I want them to keep that same energy for every other the person that comes in that courtroom under similar circumstances charged with murder saying they're sorry and they feel bad because there are plenty of people who feel sorry and feel bad and are not getting 10 years for the murder of another human being. I, I, I just, I, I, in this whole deal about, well, he just wants us to love everybody. Let me be real clear, clear. As a Christian, I can love you while you're sitting your behind in jail. Right. I mean, I, I can have compassion for you, but there's a consequence. She took a life. 
And this idea of forgiveness without any kind of act of contrition, nothing to atone, it's just, I'm sorry, and then we forgive you, I feel like that's a really bastardized version of what forgiveness is. I mean, it's an action, and it takes time. And I'm not saying that this family doesn't feel that already. They can do whatever they want. But the way that this has been turned into, well, see, this is what Botham would want. We don't actually know what he would want. He's dead. Now, his family may know best, of course, because they're the ones who are really dealing with this in ways that the rest of us are not. But I think the thing that's really insulting is that it cheapens forgiveness. It's just a thing that you just give people freely. Hey, maybe that's what some people feel. But holding that up as the model for what folks are supposed to do, and I think more importantly, what black people are supposed to do. You can slap us, you can punch us, you can kill us, you can beat us, and we're just supposed to say, we're sorry. I mean, we saw us with Charleston. And I think about this with uh, Eric Garner's widow, when she said she didn't want his damn forgiveness, right? He could go to hell with that forgiveness because her husband was dead. And people said, oh, that was so, so horrible. She wasn't gracious. But anger... And, 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 and rage are also legitimate emotions that mm-hmm. black people are not allowed to feel. I mean, can we go through that and some of that, right. too, on the way to that forgiveness? Well, well, in regards to what the jurors said, it was actually kind of frustrating to me because it was almost she was almost placing Amber as the victim and, and not not Bo. Right. And it's, it's, it's very, very disappointing. I think it's, especially in this day and age that we're in society, I think it sets a standard and a tone to kind of how, how things are. And the fact that he was, as his mom obviously expressed outrage, uh, uh, you know, uh, differently than the brother, but I mean, he was like she said, he was sitting there innocently and in his his own domain, his sanctuary, eating ice cream, relaxed, not a threat to her at all. Even if she wa- even when she walked in, he wasn't a threat to her. Even if it was, even if it was not uh, his place, the reality is that he was not a threat. Just sitting there eating ice cream, doing what he what he was doing, and the fact that all the blame has been. Well, he's been placed at, she's been placed as kind of as a victim. I think it's a real problem in society. I think people look at the number 10, but the reality is that she probably will be doing four or five years and she'll be out. Right. If not sooner, never know. I, I, just, I just think that, again, um, when, when we discuss this now for two days, mm-hmm. uh, there is this expectation that black folks are to forgive. Mm-hmm. And I made the point. It's been 18 years since 9-11. White folks have not mm-hmm. forgiven anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is revenge. There is justice. There is, and, and that, that, that always exists. And and the thing here is right. The, the mother made it clear that we are taught to forgive as Christians, but there are consequences to your actions. Mm-hmm. And and that's the key there. So so the issue is not the brother hugging. The issue is not even really what the judge did. It is you get ten years in prison. You're a police officer. I have an expectation that as a cop, you are to operate at a much higher level Mm -hmm. and a much uh, higher care when it comes to handling of a gun. So I'm going to hold you to a higher standard. Absolutely. But, and I do think for Judge Kemp, it is an issue because I don't know of any case where a judge comes and hugs a defendant. I've never seen it. I think it, 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 it ruins this idea of impartiality. Like, why is this woman worthy of a hug? You're, you're directing her to a Bible verse. You're giving her your personal Bible. It's like, keep that same energy for every defendant that comes in that courtroom. For every person you see, Amber Geiger shouldn't be a one-off. If this is truly how you feel and this is how you live in your practice of your Christianity and your, your faith, do that for every person that comes through that door. I don't know that you expen- extend that kind of grace to anybody. So I do actually think it's an issue for the judge and more so for the judge than Botham John's family. They do what they want to do. They're private citizens, right? And they're processing a loss. You are a judge. And it should never be the case that it looks like any defendant is getting preferential treatment, much less a police officer, like you said, who have a responsibility for our health and safety every day, which is a responsibility that most people don't carry. And we also don't carry guns on a day-to-day basis right. either. And, and, and Roland, to, to your point earlier, uh, what with, with the young lady in the jury was saying, the juror was saying is that She's, he's not, he is not shot. He's dead. He's gone. To never, ever return. And I think the thing that really, really bothers me, is, I think is a huge concern should be for all of us, is that I think it somewhat, in a sense, indirectly, similarly, kind of sets a standard and kind of a template for other law enforcement. Like, oh, so, shoot, I'm so sorry. It was an accident type thing. And it's like, oh, well, so now that's the bar now. So say, oh, okay, well, we know it was an accident, but... Oh, my bad. Yeah. Right. But like you said, it's a, it has to be a higher standard. You are, you're beyond trained in, uh, than someone who's uh, a licensed to carry weapon. You're a law enforcement officer. Absolutely. They didn't have this for that officer in Minnesota when he killed that white woman. Yeah. Oh, and, and first of all, I see nobody to come off the uh, uh, stand with their Bible saying, so, uh, okay. let's, let's, let, let's hold him and pray let's for be him friends. and right. find Jesus. I'm just saying. All right, folks, back to that my unfiltered video in just one moment.
All right, fam, November 7th through the 11th, the Life Lux Jazz Experience is going to be phenomenal, folks, taking place in La Cabo, November 7th through the 11th, uh, of course, uh, at the Day Club Los Cabos. It's going to be an amazing time. You're talking about, of course, golf and spa and wellness and, of course, uh, unbelievable concerts. The second annual Life Lux, Life Lux Jazz Experience will feature folks such as Mark Curry, Joel Albright, Alex Bunyan, Raul Madan, uh, Incognito, Pieces of a Dream, Kirk Whalem, Average White Band, Donovan McClurkin, Shalaya, Roy Ayers, and Ronnie Laws and Ernest Quarles for Tom Brown as well. Folks, it's going to be amazing. So if you want packages, go to lifeluxjazz.com, L-I-F-E-L-U-X-C-J-Z-Z.com. Or if you want to watch a live stream, that's right. We have a live stream there, folks. Uh, it's very simple. You go to gfntv.com, gfntv.com. The live stream pass will cost you $10.99. And so uh, they're selling those packages between now through October 30th. And so if you can't make it uh, there, but you want to experience everything there, you can do so with this pass. I'll be broadcasting Roland Martin Unfiltered that Thursday and Friday from uh, the uh, Life Lux Jazz Experience. But again, if you want to experience it, all you got to do is get your live streaming pass, folks, which will cover all three days of all the concerts taking place there. $10.99. So go to gfntv.com, gfntv.com. Looking forward to it. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.